Hello and welcome along to the Unplugged Pod, where each week we explore absolutely everything to do with switching off in a world that's always on. I'm David, and alongside me, as ever, is Mr. Unplugged, Hector Hughes. And today we're joined once again by friend of the pod, James Ware, for the Christmas special. We'll be talking about all things unplugging in 2023 and looking forward to the new year. The James. Friend of the pod doesn't get much better than that. Thank you very much for coming along once again to, to the Unplugged Pod, our only repeat customer so far, which I, I take as a good sign. So, yeah, but thank you as always, James. Thanks for having me. It's an honour, guys. Today's feeling like opening all of my advent calendar windows <laughs> at once. I think um, last time you came on the pod, James, we were in the very early stages. I mean, we still are of, of kind of uh, building the pod and tweaking with the structure. But one thing we didn't ask you that we have subsequently asked every guest is how do you unplug? Oh, wow. That's, I can see you practice delivering that as well. That was like the Unplugged podcast equivalent of let's get ready to rumble. It, he's wheeled it out a few times. I unplug. I think my strongest part of my unplugging routine is every morning I meditate for 45 minutes and I don't turn my phone on before I do that. And I really dig that. I wish I had more parts of my routine that were like that in some ways. But that really works to start the day, ground a bit, feel like you've had a bit of time for yourself before you get up to speed with the rest of the world. So that's probably my top regular one day. What are you, what are you doing for 45 minutes? Are you doing any particular focus on the breath or what? what? Yeah, mainly mindfulness meditation is normally the way I act. So, bit bit of breath, bit of body, some good vibes at the end. <laughs> That's a general running order. I think everyone sort of says they meditate every day, but nobody does. But the 45 minutes probably puts you in a different kind of category, James, no? I mean, that's the that's sizable amount. That's not your... Your headspace entry level five minutes. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I used to do half an hour. I've pushed up a little bit this year. I think 45 minutes feeling good. I think that's going into 2024 with me. Some things are being left in the chat luggage from 2023, but we'll carry that one over. Well, with that in mind, I thought um, on the, the Christmas edition of the Unplugged Pod 2023, what we, what we would do is we could go back and reflect on some of the, uh, the best unplugging stories from, from the year and kind of look ahead to 2024 as well. So uh, pre-pod, we were chatting a little bit this week about our individual favorite unplugging stories from the year. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's lots out there, of course. It's very much an on-point uh, topic. So, yeah, why, why, don't, why don't we, I'll tell you what, I'll start off with my, my favourite unplugged story of, of 2023. And that is there's an island uh, off the coast of Finland. It's a national park that uh, has gone completely phone free. So it's when you, when you arrive on this island, you're, you're encouraged to turn off your phone and completely disconnect and just enjoy the nature and enjoy, uh, you know, your... your the company you're with and everything like that. It's not so extreme that you can't talk to people or um, have a little splash around the sea. There's other stimulus there, but you're strongly encouraged to to completely unplug. And it's the first example that I'd heard of not just being in a certain room or being a small group of people, but actually expanding it to to kind of a geographical space where, where you had to unplug. So I thought that was a really interesting one. And Finland famously, although the criteria for this is a bit messy, but Famously, the happiest country in the world, I think. Always in, always up there in the medal positions, I think. So yeah, they keep racking it up. I wonder how Nokia feel about this legacy. Is it a sign of their lack of success? I can also see this making a great spin-off Scandi Noir series. The detectives running around, there are no mobile phones. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Uh, so yeah, that's one that maybe uh, actually a friend of mine who's been on the pod, Shafi, he. He lives in Tallinn, just where you've been, I think, James. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just across the water from from Finland. So he said he might check that out. Actually, in the it's port. it's crazy that 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 you know we even need to make an island phone free these days. But because it's usually completely the opposite. I was I went to uh, Greece in May and tried to get. We tried to find like a, the most secluded island we could. Ended up being like you know the, an island that was massively popular on TikTok. So we stayed at these uh, these little like fishing houses, which were very picturesque, just on the water, and it was it was like the TikTok spot of the island. So literally all day from like seven in the morning all the way through till nine at night, there were just people like walking up and down, 
just just doing like dances with TikTok straight outside the room. <laughs> and that that is most places nowadays. So yeah, hats off to them and great great PR for them. You know, it's great to be the first. And like you know, now you got three random English blokes talking about them on a on a podcast yeah, sure. in North London. So hats off to them. Do you feel Hector as Unplug get bigger and you're you know in many ways the face of the your company, right? Do you feel like you can't be spotted with people doing TikTok dances and stuff? Because if anyone paps you, they'll be like, "This guy's a fraud," and like you know, you need to you need to be a bit. Careful. Yeah, well, as long as I'm not doing it myself. But yeah, it's it's actually a really it's one of the one of the the many benefits of uh, doing what I do, which is that it, it does like keep me accountable. You know, I'm always thinking like I can't catch myself scrolling or like any of these things because what if someone spots me and everyone will, everyone will know I'm a fraud so it's good just to be like reminded every single day because you know you, it, we, we could all do with scrolling a little less myself included so it is very useful for that it's a it's a perk of the job for sure um so why don't you tell us sector about your uh kind of favorite unplugging news story from the last year or so yeah for sure for sure so I, I went for one that it turns out was actually uh 2022 but it kind of spills into this year which is a an a village in India has like implemented uh, a mandatory digital detox. So I, I think it's the evening, and it was basically because post-pandemic, they just found that all the kids in the village were just spending the evening scrolling on you know, TikTok and, and whatever else. So the whole village has banned screens uh, every evening, which I think is just such a, a wonderful experiment. Again, it, it doesn't get into like the slightly Orwellian dystopian future where... You know, we're having to ban citizens from doing stuff. I'm not sure, but I think it's uh, I think it's an interesting experiment. I think we'll see more and more of this. I also saw in the UK, you know, teachers or, or schools banning phones from classrooms. Like I think we'll see, especially with kids, more and more of these kind of things. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. Is, is that the way to go? Probably not, because like the more you tell people they can't do something, the more they want to do it. But I think with kids, though, like I, I'm kind of libertarian leaning and I don't like the idea of a government telling you, you know, what you can put in your body or what you can do or, or anything like this. But at the same time, I think I don't think I think you can be libertarian and still say that pe- children, children don't have the right to, to decide stuff because, you know, we don't let kids do something because their brains aren't fully formed. They're not an adult. They don't they can't vote like. So I, I think it's, um yeah, anything to do with, I think, kids having their screen time reduced by a government or a figure of authority mandate, I, I actually think is still, those two things can live side by side, like, you know, um, not wanting the government to do too much, but also accepting that children are, uh, they're, they're children, you know. Do, do you think there should be a minimum age before someone can get a, an iPhone? I think it would certainly have a lot of benefits. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the responsibility for yourself and for those around you from having a phone when you can record anything or what is a very addictive device I don't see how that's any different, really, to to a lot of other things which are illegal, illegal before sixteen. Um, and I mean, pre sixteen, you are you are young, you know. So, so many countries differ on loads of different um, topics between like sixteen and twenty one, but most countries agree that before sixteen, you really are like a child. So yeah, I I, I think I'd, I'd probably support that. Yeah. It is crazy as a reflection of the state of play in twenty twenty three that these things are such big news stories. I was thinking walking down here that you're one day, if a whole country in the early days of mobile phones had been like, we're banning mobile phones, we don't fancy them, they're not for us. If you come, you need to leave your mobile phone. That wouldn't have really been a news story even. It would have just seemed like choice. And especially individual schools. Like when we first had mobile phones and were still at school... It wouldn't have been a news story if one of our schools had said, you know what, these aren't really working for us, so no phones in school. But now it's this huge thing and people write op-eds about it and it is just wild. But one island having no phones is a very worthy news story. What do we think? Has the ship sailed on, on a country banning, banning phones? Well, I mean, I don't know how much iPhone use there is in North Korea. Oh, that's a good point. I bet among the top brass, there are a few nice, if not iPhones, like Huawei's floating around. Sure. Sent over the Chinese border. Yeah. But for the masses, I don't know what the, what the rules are there. But yeah, I'd uh, say so the ship's uh, sailed for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. James Ware. 
I, I'm going to throw one at you that's unprepared. But I think it's funny how this has become like best bands rather than any other story, which again is some more reflection of the state of affairs. But I'm going to go for... I, I feel like this isn't one story, but it's a bit of a movement that seems to have been developing more this year, which is no mobile phone filming at concerts. I was looking into it, and apparently some people are saying the OG banner was Kate Bush on her comeback tour. And apparently because she hadn't toured in 20 plus years, and she wrote this long, very emotive note, like you would some friends coming for dinner, about why she didn't want people filming and the atmosphere she'd chosen and people actually respected it and it didn't I think they had quite a lot of security to enforce it but they didn't need to and there have been more and more things I've seen one thing this week that my namesake the DJ James Hype who's probably probably less unplugged quite plugged in man in general but he's now doing this series of shows with another DJ where they want to have no phone filming including not too far from here at the drum sheds 15,000 people I don't know if you've run into that in the full right here Dave 15,000 ravers but that's gonna be no phone filming at least in theory and I think that as much as I get why for some people in some events part of what you're paying for is to get a video to put on social media and say I was there I do get that and understand that but there is something really special about being in a big group of people and everyone being present and I think that now there's some sense that people can make that choice again the people running things that feels really exciting to me so that, I'm here for it that's the crazy thing and, and you're right that like there is something special about a whole event where, where people aren't on their phone but like everything any event is better without phones you know like i can't think of the ad you're right it is to document like some people just you know just like documenting their life that's kind of how they live and, and it it will feel restricted because they can't do it at this concert but for like everyone who goes and and took on where no one using their phone like definitely it's a better experience and i think you remember it more as well like there's some scientific study that if you're filming you're there like thinking about the film and you're thinking about what you're going to post and caption it later on social media. Mm. So you're less actually there with whatever's happening on stage, with like the person you're there with. So yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. I applaud it. I think they could even, if people just want to get, say, I was there, they could have a few songs where it's phone time. Everyone gets their phone out. That'd be okay. And then they're gone. But it's for people who film everything. You get football, you get everywhere, don't you? That's the reflection of exactly what you say. It is a lifestyle. And I certainly, in my Santa hat, don't want to be a draconian, no phone filming anyway. Like, I, yeah, I've been to events and wanted to send people videos, but it feels like there's a better way we could achieve that as a collective than people just having their phones out the whole time and all you can see is people's phones. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we do unplugged. You know, we, we need we need people to take the, the pictures for social media before they lock their phone away. So. <laughs> there's a strict window. <laughs> But it's a tricky one, that, right? Because then, you know, a lot of the comments on your most like viral videos, someone's always making kind of fair but sarky comment like, oh, right, so where's all this content come from if you go on your phone? And I get it. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a natural comment to sit underneath stuff like that. But, yeah, where, 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 where do you kind of think about that as a company? I mean, well, I mean what, what do, you, do you say to people? Do you nudge them to, like, take all the content before or after or you just let people do what they want? Yeah, we, you know, we, we give kind of suggestions, but fundamentally, like, you know, it's not rocket science. Pe people figure it out. But, yeah, I think for us, we definitely get a little bit of pushback from some people. And, you know, I'm not on Instagram, for example. So, uh, you know, I don't love it as a channel, but it's a fantastic marketing channel. And fundamentally, like, the change we want to make in the world, like, we, we think by succeeding, we do move society in a different direction from the society where we're spending more and more time on our phones. And to make that change in the world, in the world, you know, we need to kind of master uh, distribution and marketing channels, and and like that is just the best way to do it. So we could put our tin foil hats on and sit in a room and like not engage with it at all, but like we're not going to change anything doing that. So I think it's you know like the reason we're putting the content out there is to you know help people think or, or get 
pr- provoke a thought of like, God, you know, could I do with a few days off my phone? So yeah, I think it's it's net positive. Obviously, we get the pushback, but you know, actually the way the algorithm works, all those comments saying uh, get off your phone is, is just good for our reach. So you know, <laughs> yeah. keep them coming. And also, if you if you haven't followed um, Unplugged's Instagram account, it is a lovely. Lovely account. Yeah, no it's credit. Very to warm and friendly. It's account. ironically a great advert for Instagram. <laughs> That's the level it's got. It's great to. Instagram account. Yeah, I, no, nothing to do with me that one. But uh, yeah. Um, all right. What, what about individual? And perhaps we can talk about our our most memorable individual unplugging moment of uh, of 2023. Uh, do you want to start, James? I'm very happy to. Yeah, I can't just recycle my tale of retreat from when I was last on the pod uh so I'm going I'm going to go for something that's yeah I I wouldn't have initially said oh yeah that moment but it leapt out it's stuck in my memory for some reason and in many ways remind me a bit of my personal experience of staying at Unplugged so I think I think it's worthy of the top spot for the year which is I was doing a mini moon just after my wedding at at the end of April. So I'd had all the planning and the opposite of digital detox, like (laughs) hailing taxis, making six phone calls. I felt like some kind of Wall Street trader in the 80s. It was madness. And so went away. We're in this amazing hotel in Menorca and they recommended going on this walk to a virgin beach which was somewhat on the property. It was unclear exactly where the borders were, but you could only access it by walking. It was this unspot beach. So they gave us a packed lunch hamper and we went off to that really only with a paper map that they'd given us from the property, marched down there, got there. There was no one else there apart from one man who was (laughs) in full castaway mode, like completely nude, unbelievably sunburned it was unclear whether he was dead or not initially but it transpired that he was just having a nap he was on this beach woke up went for a bit of a swim was he doing some fishing i don't really know but <laughs> there was something about that moment of having got there just surviving off his pat lunch phones didn't really come into it and that childlike joy of just having a map following a trail finding where you're going to go. And yeah, something about the the nude local added to that as well. I really fell a long way away from it all. So that is my unplugged moment of the year, I'd say. That's nice, man. Love it. I wasn't expecting that. But <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> um, how about you, Hector? Uh, yeah, like, likewise, I can't really go with the, the retreat. So um, I think it's, it's actually... What I've really, really enjoyed is we're recording this on I think nineteenth of December. I have really made an effort to uh, get out of as many Christmas events as possible. Been to a few, but like not go to like all the random Christmas parties and just spend the evenings in reading. So I've read a lot in the last few weeks, and that has been wonderful. You know, something about this time of year when you know, do I really want to get out in the rain and you know, go to Hackney to some random bar? Uh, or actually, I could just stand and read. So have I've got through a lot of books in the last few weeks, and and that has that has been wonderful. So more of that in in twenty twenty four. I hope. Lovely, like that a lot. Uh, and then for me, I think um, this isn't really unplugged. Well, there's a couple. Okay, so this isn't really unplugging, but this podcast has been one of the few times in recent years that I've actually listened to someone talking, which is kind of crazy. I think I said this to Hector early on when we recorded a few podcasts, but. I'm a fast talker, I'm a very fast talker, right? And I will naturally like interrupt people in daily conversation because I think, oh, I've got something clever to say, so I'll just say it. But in this podcast, if someone wants to talk for seven minutes, you just have to let them talk. And it's actually really like amazing listening to someone talk and just sort of being really present with that. And it's it's, it's pathetic that it's it's been a podcast that has to like stimulate that. But like I found that could be different because in my normal life, I would never sit and listen to someone talking for seven minutes because I'd have 50 things that I wanted to say uh, and I would say them and interrupt them. So, yeah. Has it made you listen to more people in your normal life or not? It will do in the fullness of time, Hector. Yeah, I think it's early days. At the moment, I can't compartmentalize. Renew the pod contract. That's the <laughs> plug. Yeah. And the, the other thing which um, I guess I wasn't really expecting is I my dad taught me to juggle. Shout out to my dad when I was like 12. 
and uh, l- I learned to juggle, and I was like, oh, this is a cool little party trick. Then didn't juggle for, um, you know, like 20 years or something or more. And then recently, uh, and they're actually there, James, in the orange. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a ma- magic <laughs> show now. I wasn't actually going to juggle, cause, but I recently got some juggling balls and started juggling. And the first time I did after like 20 years, I was like, oh, my God. I spent an hour getting back to it, and I'm, James surely is someone that can juggle. They're really nice. But when, you, when you're really. juggling, like a lot of things. Oh, he's taken you, out his mic. <laughs> you're totally like in it. Yeah. You're totally unplugged when you're juggling. How, how long were you juggling for? Uh, well, on that, because I hadn't done it for like twenty something years, so I did it for like an hour, just to get back into it. And like, I mean, I'm not like an amazing juggler or anything, but it's pretty, pretty similar to, pretty similar to James. Like, oh, that's I, nice. You, you pick it up. You pick it up again. Let <laughs> uh, me have another go because I'm bad. But but when yeah, it, you're totally like totally in it. You've got a nicer technique than your dojo. No, I like your up and down. The cascade. <laughs> it is. It's a really good one for the brain, isn't it? Because it you have to be fully locked in. And it's a good, I don't do it that often, Dave, but then when you do just grab a few oranges and do it, people are like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. Or it eggs, is, if you fancy it's the... A good, <laughs> I have to be in a slightly different mood for the eggs, I think. <laughs> the but glass yeah. bottles only come out <laughs> post 1am. Um, but yeah, that was, those, those are mine, yeah. Love it. The pods are a good one. I didn't, I didn't think about that, but yeah. it is very, I was coming out of it very, like, grounded. For sure. Yeah, it feels good. And then what about uh, going into 2024, how we all want to unplug a bit more? Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll start here. Um, one thing I, I was really good at at the start of this year and kind of dropped off massively. And this, I think, I think this is the easy, one of the easiest entry level ways to reduce your screen time is just to pick a 12 hour period. And mine will be like 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And just not look at my phone. So at least then in a 24 hour period, but not look at any screens. So at least you've got 12 hours, which isn't that hard because you're sleeping for eight of them and like the one hour before you go to sleep and the one hour when you wake up, come on. So it's quite an, I was, I mean, it is quite an easy thing to do, but I really want to be quite religious about that. And just, and it means that no matter what happens in the other 12 hours, all right, you're at work, you're looking at it, you're on the phone, whatever. At least you can say, well, for 50% of my hours on this planet, I'm not looking at a phone at the very least, right? So that's just something I want to be like super strict with. Um, but obvious things that happen in life. But yeah, like pretty strict. So that's my pl- my plot to unplug. Love it. Have, have you got an alarm clock? Yeah, I've got two. Two, like, nice. Okay. Yeah. Back up. <laughs> but Hector, that's a great question because that's the first thing people always say is the flimsiest excuse I've ever 100%. heard. It's like, well, I use my phone for my alarm clock. It's like, bro, they're like two pounds on Amazon. Yeah. And it arrives like in four minutes. Like it's, <laughs> you just buy an alarm clock. Like super- why, why have you got two? Is it back uh, for the classic reason that people always have two? Right? It's like military because I don't trust myself with one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and, uh, and I actually put I have one by my bed, Hector, and then one by the coffee machine. Yeah, yeah. So nice. like the first one, if I roll over the first one, the second one at least is like right near the coffee machine. What's the time difference? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like ten minutes. Okay. okay nice. Yeah. And also because I'm quite conscious, I live in a block of flats, a small block, but like a block of flats. There's someone above and someone below, so I can't ignore that one. Because my conscience kicks in that, like, you can definitely hear it. Yeah, yeah. In That's there. good self blackmail. I rate that. I did see, have you seen the coffee machine that um, you know, plug in next to your bed and it's on an alarm? It, like, starts making coffee. So you set it for, like, seven and, like, it, it's making the coffee. And so you literally just have to turn around and, uh, yeah, pick up your coffee and it's already made it. But I haven't gone that far yet. But that's mine, yeah. So 12 hours without my phone every day. Love it. You, James? That's great inspo. Friend of mine I caught up with last week, he has his phone in grayscale now. Have you seen that yeah, one? That's, that's yeah, quite... Yeah. And it does work. It's very much less seductive than... Yeah, I, I think mine is going to be to take more breaks, like walks and things in my day-to-day. And ideally not use my phone during them. Maybe leave my phone behind during them. I think that would be a good rule that's possible. But I think I'm, I'm, I've noticed, especially towards the end of this year, I tend to do quite big blocks of 
sitting at my laptop for, and I don't think that's the way. I think breaks are good. Maybe get some juggling balls inspired by you, Dave. So that's <laughs> hard that's to look at your phone while one. you're juggling. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be one. And I think be even more conscious about when I'm using my phone to cover up feelings. That's saying I really know at the at the end of this year is often if I'm mindlessly going on social media, it's not for no reason. It's because actually there's something going on inside me and an easier cop out is just to look at social media. So I want to be strict on that, I think, really looking out for that. And also last one, I'm I'm really, I'm really triple barreling here, but trying to create more than consuming on social media, which Dave with the pod is a great inspiration at. But I think that's a really good one because it's easy. It's really easy to get into this mindset of social media is so bad, but it has lots of positive things like marketing really good things, for example, or being able to create and get that in front of people. But it's easy not to harness it for that. So I'd like to tip that balance a bit in my social media use next year, as well as being really mindful of when I'm just using social media to avoid feeling things. I think that's really self-aware. The, I think everyone can can hear that and relate to it. Like when you're just scrolling, you, yeah, you're trying to numb something, aren't you? Same as any like vice, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Hector? Love it. Um, I think, I mean... Uh, uh, the, my phone habits are pretty good, but I, what I'd say is they like slide over time, you know, mm. and then I need this kind of reset. And I think I probably didn't do enough of those this year. Like the silent retreat I did came out of that one, like battered. That was brutal. And I, I, don't know, I, I like, wasn't in that good health at the time. So like, I came out of that. I didn't feel like I had a reset from that one. So I think just getting more of those resets, like, you know, practice what I preach, go and spend a few days offline like regularly, you know, because I always think like, I'm too busy. Uh, you know, I can't can't take time off this month, but then afterwards it's so it's so obvious in hindsight. So I've got, as I said to you, chats. I'm, I'm starting the new year offline. So I've got a, a, a gig uh, cat sitting in Portugal <laughs> over New Year for five nights. Gig is a wise man. Pleasingly <laughs> analog gig's business. Yeah. Cat gig. So if anyone yeah. uh, listening uh, needs a cat sitter in in 2020. Four, yeah. then I'm available. And You'll make sure you nail the first one, Hector, before you go. Yeah. I'll nail the first one, get a good reference from the first cat and then and then roll on. So, so it's just all these little opportunities. Like I'll do five nights offline there. And it's just a really nice excuse. And uh, yeah, j- just like lean more into that. I'd, I'd love to do the um, one of these kind of walking trails, go and do like a week walking down the Santiago, whatever it's called in, in Spain, that kind of thing. So just like live the brand a bit more because, you know, get it right sometimes but I, I could definitely do it more so uh so lean into that and i think that will then just help keep uh, keep good good hygiene and habits on the on the other the other elements of it i think the um yeah this probably naturally uh morphs into something else i wanted to talk about but the camino de santiago is a great one right so if you do it in its entirety young healthy man like you probably take about three and a half weeks uh, even though it's not the the time isn't essential, but the, the main starting point from like the bottom of France, which is across the border to, to Santiago, it's like, yeah, about three and a half weeks. And I think, Hector, if you could, not to tell you what to do, but if you could do that without a phone, that would just be an awesome, at some point, you know, while you are yeah. running unplugged, that would just be an awesome, like, because I want to talk a little bit about kind of extreme unplugging potentially for next year. But that would just be an awesome one. No? Well, and that point at the French-Spanish border at the bottom, we, we might be having some cabins up there soon. Oh, oh, that's a smart idea. Really cool because my dad's done the Camino de Santiago actually and just loved it and I know a couple of other people that have done part of it and um and there are apparently if anyone that doesn't know by the way I'll put like a a screen overlap but yeah it's from uh, Saint Jean Pierre de Port somewhere somewhere like there's a French town and it's the cross you can do it many ways um because it was um originally of course a pilgrimage to Santiago so you can go from anywhere technically but most people take the northern route um, across Spain the Basque country Asturias and then into Galicia, and uh, yeah, it, it takes like a month, basically. Yeah, and, and I'd be the, well up for that. G- give me enough maps. I love a good map. Yeah. So, like, and the range of people that. that do it, apparently, is just so, there are some people that are doing it, like, with no phone, barefoot, it's a proper pilgrimage, 
obviously other people are doing like four days with yeah, mates yeah. and like it's all about the evenings and like having a few drinks and stuff but uh, apparently it's just something it's a really incredible like thing where all you have to do is wake up and just walk for six hours and then eat and then you go to sleep and you just carry on yeah so yeah and i think these kind of things we always feel like there's no way i could take three and a half yeah like, even as you're saying that i'm thinking i can do that next year i can take a month out but it's always like in hindsight it kind of affects the rest of your life so it's like obviously fine that you took out three and a half weeks at this point you know sometimes we really do have stuff going on but so often like for example the silent retreat i did before unplugged that before i did it felt like there's no way i can take 10 days and go yeah. to the himalayas but then that has just like drastically not not to be grandiose but like drastically altered all of my life in many ways and it's these kind of things like where we really do something that feels a bit uncomfortable and even talk about it. And the first reaction is like there's no way i could do that that like that make all the difference i think so and also i think like there'll be someone listens to this who's a parent who's saying i couldn't do that and they mean i couldn't do that right but yeah you probably could as you say like there's there's certain people who've got certain responsibilities that absolutely could not do that because they'd genuinely be like letting people down and obviously everyone's got you know different lives and stuff but yeah just on the extreme unplugging thing i sent hector something this week which you know considering i've never done probably like a day without my phone might be a bit of a stretch <laughs> is building up to it he's about to announce his 10 days next year this is what we're really here for I see something in a there's like a german monastery in the north of germany is this one of the dark rooms? <laughs> I genuinely considered doing that at one point. Yeah. You tell me what you know about it, James, before I... Yeah. Well, I've seen a mix of them, but essentially they lock you in total darkness for a certain length of time. I think some of them, the minimum they seem to suggest works is four days. And then the longest is seven or ten days, I think, if you're a novice. And they lock you in this complete darkness, bring you food, and I think check that within certain realms you haven't gone totally insane. And that's the drill. Mm. So, I, yeah, so that basically. But I think, so the one I looked at, they don't lock you in. And they made it seem anyway that it's, you're obviously part of the monastery where there are people doing all kinds of different stuff. And some people live and some people work. And, uh, but there is a section of the monastery where, yeah, you're in complete darkness. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do any more than four days. And uh, you're brought food like once a day. And also someone does come in once a day to talk to you for 20 minutes. Just to, as you say, just make sure you're not. Um, in German, because that'll probably drive you even more <laughs> crazy. <laughs> the only sensory <laughs> stimulation you get. So is, there, is this you saying that you're going to do this day? Oh, I was just throwing it out there. Okay. For the board. Yeah, very good. It, it would be, yeah, I, I, I think it would be interesting. I'm Love not it. sure what massive takeaways would be. Straight or... into the defense. <laughs> I mean, that's quite like extreme. Well, you... I was just looking at loads of stuff like, all right, let me throw it out to you boys. If you, let's have the darkness retreat, like a seven day water fast, another 10 days of silence or 10 days in a desert island. Like in terms of 2024, if you had the time or whatever, which, what would appeal to you? If you wanted to go real extreme. I've done that. I've done uh, like five day water fast before okay. and uh, they're just quite tough. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit like everyone says like after the first couple of days, you just get this like surge of energy, but it is just like you realize how much of a highlight food is throughout the day. So mm -hmm. they are, they are quite grueling it's during lockdown as well. Um, so mixed experiences with that, but I don't know the darkness one. I doesn't like immediately jump out to me as like, I would love to do that, but I think it would be a really interesting experience. Um, I, I really liked the, the desert Island, but I think if I, if I could only do one thing, it would be like a couple of weeks walking a walking trail, no phone, just just walking like i think i think magic happens when you walk and so actually just spending eight nine ten hours a day walking no phone like that would be that'd be pretty profound and do you think like for example the camino i think is pretty social right so if you did it with part of your thing being like not chatting to people or well, how, how would that sit? yeah i'm definitely out of silence I'm, I'm definitely an introvert so uh uh like a an introvert in, in many ways so i yeah the, what what really appeals is just spending two weeks alone with my thoughts walking obviously you can have a bit of a chat with people on the way but like, i wouldn't like 
buddy up with people on day one and and kind of walk along with them so we'll see past nights and yeah yeah, yeah none, of that, <laughs> none of that yeah because it is quite a mixed bag isn't it you get all sorts on the camino i've heard about people having incredible spiritual serendipities i've also heard about people going thinking they were going to detox and getting a camino boyfriend on night one and it just being this huge tune-up so i hope you end up in the right lane if you do do this act uh, apparently a lot depends on when you go obviously so in the summer, it's like super popular. And if you want to do it and meet loads of people, that's like a cool thing. But if you go, I think in the off season, then it's it's you and your thoughts. Yeah, you go in February, there's not many people doing it, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Same question, but what's the, the one? I like the idea of a bit of motion, some walking. But I think genuinely, this is not a sponsored ad or anything. <laughs> but no, I, I really like to do some more just remote stays and doing it like, that really i i think even even just that it's not especially novel given the past whole, whole remit of the podcast but i i, I really like do that a little more regularly i think having done a big 10-day blockbuster this year i think trying to build in those little ones you do just get a lot out of doing a weekend don't you yeah and it's, um, it's something very different as well i, I felt after my passion that like it is work in many ways like we you know, I think you described it as, as mental boot camp. And like there, there is, you do kind of miss just like being able to read and like write and like spend time thinking. And like there's none of that because it's just like you're up, fucking get on the cushion, yeah. meditate. And so I think that, that it, it definitely does a different job just going somewhere for a few days and taking some books and, you know, just, just kind of doing what you want with your time. Yeah, I think, I think that kind of flavor, maybe with a bit of a writing, journaling, focus one of those kind of breaks or ideally multiple sprinkled throughout the air oh, okay. <laughs> are we, are we going to bunk in the darkness Dave is that a proposition but you obviously looked at it so what, what made you think like well no no I'm, I'm actually quite up for it <laughs> it's just not currently penned into my 2024 calendar I think it'd be really interesting because with the Vipassana thing, you come out and a lot of your experience is just how amazing the things you were not able to do are, at least on a superficial level, right? Whereas with the darkness thing, I think that would be incredible from a sensory perspective to come out and see things and having not seen sounds a little bit dangerous as well but the monks know a good thing when they're on to it they invented beer writing but i do agree that it's probably like it, you probably walk out unhealth you don't feel healthy i mean for a start your circadian rhythms or whatever have been destroyed for four days i want some big sunglasses on when i came out yeah but it's like you mentioned grayscale earlier as a similar effect when you turn that off so i've done that for periods in the past and when you go back to normal settings on your phone so grayscale for anyone who doesn't know is uh just effectively making everything on your phone gray and it really takes a lot of the a surprising amount of the excitement out of it and then you switch back on back to normal and it's amazing the like sensory overload you get from it and just like how exciting everything looks and and the the, the dopamine so i imagine getting out of those getting out of that cave would be like that on steroids is that presumably that's what you're going to pick is it the darkness I, episode. I, I, I'd is be coming. a little bit worried, Hector, honestly, because I do think it probably for some people they do it, and it, you know, I mean, four days. I know someone comes and talks to you apparently for like half an hour every day, and you have food, but uh, you know, you're being stripped of any stimulation. Uh, you're not talking to anyone apart. The dark. I mean, that's really intense. So I think some people probably do it and regret it. I'd say, whereas probably ten days in silence, nobody really regrets because. Um, well, I don't know. I haven't done it, so I'm talking about something I'm not sure about. So, but it's it's in the back of my mind somewhere. Interesting, the water fast. So, uh, so you found that pretty it's pretty tough, right? Yeah, I think um, the so I I did it a couple of times. One of them, uh, like I, I didn't get the reintegration right, so it just kind of a negative experience in my mind. Like the the like refeeding, I like you have to kind of do it a certain way just so your body can cope with it. So I really like knock myself sideways after that one. And the other one, um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously like, you know, the days are long and you, you do, I, I felt a bit like I was kind of uh, walking in slow motion. Like you are, you are fairly mentally clear, but like physically, I just felt a bit like I was walking in slow motion. I've heard people report very different experiences to that. 
Um, and then I, I remember after the first one, like after that first meal, I just had such a like uh, feeling of well being for like a few days afterwards. So you know, there's no doubt that it's um, does some good stuff, but I don't. Yeah, I think I I don't know how sustainable those kind of long term fasts are. Like all, all the expert, all the like experts, the gurus, um, who have been kind of recommending it. A lot of them have like said actually, I'm not such a big fan of the the, the multi day fast now, mm-hmm. because they are they're that much harder than like a 36 hour fast. You know, where you're just skipping a one day worth of meals. So. I think all these things are great to try. But I tell you what, the other thing I would say about fasting, because I've messed around with all sorts of fasting, and I do, it, for me personally, uh, it, it did give me an unhealthier relationship to food. So I really didn't have, I really didn't have any issues with food at all. And when I was messing around with fasting, I found I was a lot more like overeating when I was eating, just like a lot more like binging. Mm. Um, it was during lockdown as well. So like the fridge was just there, but I found, uh, and actually I saw a friend of mine the other day who wrote a, uh she she is like a did a phd in psychology and wrote her doctoral paper on how um you know families uh you know who, who can't afford food or struggle to afford food and so have food scarcity for their children uh, are much more likely to have kids who grow up with eating disorders so there is something about restricting the food does um d- does i think lead to more more of an unhealthy relationship with it so i would say yeah i would say it's not a must that that's really interesting because one of the reasons i would do it is because also i have like a healthy relationship with food never like eaten too much or too little like you know been pretty lucky uh no food i don't eat etc etc so i do it because of that so it's interesting that you yeah come away with that but would you do it in the darkness eh? (laughs) water water (laughs) fast (laughs) darkness like um all right, nice one, nice one. Uh, James, anything at the end of the pod, we normally ask people if they're selling anything or where to find you, or but presumably people, you know, do you want to sell your rum or anything like that? that or, that's very kind, <laughs> If you can't mate. fix it with meditation, yeah, just, fix it with booze. Si- sign up to my sales funnel in, in the links below. And what the gurus be, aren't telling you. You will be inundated. No, no, it's, it's been great to be on, guys. Thank you very much for having me. And yeah, I think... Really inspiring. Something else I'd like to do in my 2024, I think, is organise more gatherings with friends for phone free. Like have people for dinner and make that no phone, even for an hour or whatever. Because it is cool how different it feels, even sitting down and doing this, just talking and people actually being present is so different to every time they get an email pig or whatever they're looking at their phone so i'm taking that away from the podcast in into 2024 yes yeah, like um you can get like lock boxes and stuff your phone obviously you have it unplugged but you can imagine if you write invite six people around your house the awkward moment is being like right phones in the box guys but after you've done that then everyone sees it as a, as a net positive right i mean people are gonna have a better couple of hours of uh yeah, and I think if if people know that's what they're coming to do as well, because otherwise I think you've got to market it, haven't you? You've you got to market it, yeah. People yeah, the but then it is quite exciting. It's quite novel, isn't it? Because like it's still it's still very rare, you know. So I think, and again, it does it does just create a better experience. So yeah, I would uh, urge anyone to to give it a go, following in James's footsteps. Merry Christmas, boys! Love it. Merry Christmas. Twenty twenty four. Cheers, gents. Cause you pray never for like this.